Hey friends, Omkar here for Simple Snippets. Till now, we have learnt how to journalize transactions, how to post it into ledger, how trial balance is prepared and how final accounts are made. This is time to learn what meaning we can make out of financial statements and to make some meaning out of the amounts, we need ratios. So in this tutorial, we are going to learn ratio analysis. Financial statements gives us clear idea about the financial position of the company. It will help the proprietor whether to continue the business or close down or to make changes in working style of the business. How? By knowing profit of the company, assets of the company, liabilities of the company, the proprietor takes the decision how he would go with running of the business and that's how he determines to continue with the business further or to close it down. Financial statements gives the clear idea of the profit margin in amounting term. But with the help of ratio, we get the clear idea of comparison and with the help of ratio, we are able to express relationship between different figures. Now if I tell you a firm's asset are rupees 1 lakh and firm's profit is rupees 2000. Now these are mere amounts unless and until we make some relationship between assets and profits. So mere numbers will not help creating relationships in numbers and making some sense would definitely help a businessman to take major decisions. So ratios express the relationship between two numbers as well as accounting figures. Ratio can be expressed as three types. First is simple pure second is percentage and third is rate. If I tell you current assets are rupees 20,000 and current liabilities are 4,000, 20,000 and 4,000. So this ratio comes to 5 is to 1. This is simple or pure ratio. Percentage, if I tell you gross profit is rupees 200 and turnover is rupees 1,000, then we would say 200 divided by 1000 into 100 comes to 20%. So this 20% depicts the ratio between gross profit and turnover. Third is rate. If I tell you stock is converted into sales 6 times in 12 months, then we can say that the rate at which stock is converted into sales is once in 2 months. Now this rate is also nothing but ratio. There are major 3 types of ratios. First is balance sheet ratios, then revenue ratios and third combined ratios. We would start with balance sheet ratios first. First is current ratio. Current ratio is current assets upon current liabilities. Current assets include assets which are circulated and liquidated in cash within one accounting period. Examples of which are debtors, bills receivables, short term investments, inventories, loose tools, etc. Current liabilities includes any liability which is due to be paid within one accounting period. Examples of which are creditors, bills payable, outstanding expenses, proposed dividend, bank overdraft, etc. Now what is the significance of this ratio? It indicates strength of working capital and measures short term solvency of business. It reflects the ability of business to pay its short term liabilities. Generally, this ratio 2 is to 1 is regarded as standard ratio which means current assets must be nearly 2 times of current liabilities. Next ratio is quick ratio or liquid ratio or acid test ratio is calculated by quick assets upon quick liabilities. Quick assets include all current assets minus stock and prepaid expenses. Quick liabilities includes all current liabilities minus advances received and bank overdraft. What is the significance of this ratio? It helps to know the immediate short term liabilities and abilities of the business to pay them. Generally 1 is to 1 is the standard quick ratio which means quick assets must be at least equal to quick liabilities. Next ratio is stock to working capital ratio which is calculated as stock upon working capital into 100 and working capital means current assets minus current liabilities. Now here stock means closing stock. Working capital we have already said it is assets minus current liabilities. What is the significance? It shows the quality of working capital and the quantum of stock in it. Next ratio is proprietary ratio, net worth ratio, 
asset backing ratio it is calculated as proprietor funds upon total assets into 100 proprietor funds includes paid up preference share capital paid up equity share capital capital reserve revenue reserves security reserve profit and loss account minus accumulated losses and fictitious assets and total assets includes fixed assets investments current assets etc what is significance of this ratio it determines to what extent total assets are financed by proprietors it also compares proprietors funds with total assets and total liabilities it also indicated as total assets is equal to total liabilities and total liabilities is equal to proprietor funds plus loans plus current liabilities normally this ratio should be guided as 65% to 75% but it differs from business to business next is debt equity ratio which is calculated as debt upon equity or loan funds upon own funds debt includes borrowed funds as secured or unsecured loans including debentures interest accrued and due on loans proprietor funds includes paid up share capital reserves and surplus minus fictitious assets and accumulated losses what is the significance of this ratio this is solvency ratio and it also indicated the proportion of debt and equity in the financing of funds of the concerns it also shows protection cover for long term creditors the low debt equity ratio is considered as favorable to creditors it indicates low ratio means less dependence on long term debts if debt equity ratio is 2/3 then it is considered as satisfactory ratio it implies that out of 3 total funds debt would be 2 and equity would be 1 next is capital gearing ratio financing leverage ratio or capital structure ratio it is calculated as capital bearing fixed rate of interest and dividend divided by capital not bearing fixed rate of interest and dividend capital bearing fixed rate of interest and dividend includes preference share capital debentures loans etc capital not bearing fixed rate of interest and dividends includes equity share capital reserves and surplus fictitious assets and accumulated losses what is the significance of this ratio it shows balance between debt and equity and it also shows whether a company is practicing trading on equity now these are major balance sheet ratios let's begin with revenue statement ratios first is gross profit ratio gross profit ratio is calculated as gross profit divided by net sales into 100 we have already learned in final accounts how gross profit is calculated in trading account net sales refers to sales minus sales return so that's how gross profit ratio is calculated next is operating ratio operating ratio is calculated as operating costs divided by net sales into 100 operating costs include cost of goods sold that is cogs plus operating expenses it expresses the relationship between each item of expenditure with sales it brings out the relationship between elements of operating cost and net sales what is the significance of this ratio this enables the management in controlling costs and improving profitability as well as the auditor and income tax department to judge the correctness and reliability of various expenses next is net profit ratio to calculate net profit ratio there are three ways first is net operating profit divided by net sales into 100 operating profit refers to operating revenue or revenue from operations minus operating expenses as calculated in above ratio and net sales refers to sales minus sales return second way is net profit before tax that is npbt upon net sales so operating expenses plus other non operating expenses would be deducted from profit and we would arrive at net profit before tax and when it is divided by net sales we would get net profit ratio another way is after arriving at net profit before tax we would deduct tax from it and we would get net profit after tax and then we would divide it by net sales and we would get net profit ratio next is stock turnover ratio which is calculated as cost of goods sold upon average stock or net sales upon average stock at selling price now first of all cost of goods sold refers to opening stock plus purchases 
plus direct expenses minus closing stock average stock refers to opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2 what is the significance of this ratio stock turnover ratio helps in determining the frequency of inventory replacement it also helps in determining the liquidity of business organization so we are done with revenue ratios let's move further to composite ratios in composite ratios it means sum of items of balance sheet are compared with sum of items of revenue statement first ratio is return on capital employed it is calculated as net profit before interest tax and dividend divided by capital employed here capital employed means long term loans plus proprietors funds what is the significance of this ratio it gives clear index or utilization of assets earning capacity this ratio measures the overall profitability from the total funds employed it means measures the relationship between net profit before interest tax and capital employed to earn net profit second is return on equity which is calculated as net profit after tax and fixed dividend divided by equity capital net profit after tax less fixed dividend it refers to preference dividend and this amount would be divided by equity share capital which is paid up equity share capital and when it is multiplied by 100 we would get return on equity funds third ratio is earning per share which is calculated as net profit after tax minus preference dividend divided by number of equity shares here you can see the numerator is same but here it is divided by number of equity shares to get earning per share next ratio is dividend payout ratio which means how much dividend company is paying out of earnings they have made it is quite simple to calculate dividend per equity share would be divided by earnings per share then we would get how much percent of earnings is distributed as dividend next is dividend yield ratio this is nothing but what are the returns on investment if person makes investment into shares right now which is calculated as dividend per share divided by market price per share next is price earning ratio which is calculated as market price per share divided by earnings per share it represents how much rupees a person is willing to spend to earn rupee 1 behind each equity share next is fixed assets to turnover ratio which is calculated as net sales divided by fixed assets what is the significance of this ratio it indicates efficiency in utilization of fixed assets higher ratio indicates high degree of efficiency in utilization and low degree signifies vice versa next is debt service ratio or interest coverage ratio it is calculated as net profit before interest and tax divided by fixed interest charges fixed interest charges here mean interest on long term loans what is the significance of this ratio its main purpose is to measure the interest paying capacity of the company next is debt service coverage ratio which is calculated as cash profits available for debt servicing divided by interest plus installments due on loans now here cash profits available for the debt servicing are calculated as net profit after interest and tax plus non cash debits to profit and loss account examples of which are depreciation goodwill return off loss on sales on fixed assets and we would arrive at cash profits for debt servicing when we divide it by interest plus installment due on loans we would get debt service coverage ratio what is the significance of this ratio this ratio indicates the company's ability to pay interest and principal amount on time as it indicates whether the company is able to pay interest and repayment of loan out of earnings of the company it is more useful for lender as it takes care of total repayment liability next ratio is debtors turnover ratio or debtors velocity which is calculated as net credit sales divided by debtors plus bills receivable or credit sales divided by average account receivables debtors and bills receivable may be taken at the average of opening and closing amounts if the details are not available only the closing balance may be considered next is creditors turnover ratio it is calculated same as debtors turnover ratio but credit purchase and bills payable will come in this ratio which is quite simple another ratio and the last ratio for this tutorial is 
डेट कलेक्शन पीरियड विच इज कैलकुलेटेड एज नंबर ऑफ डेट्स और मंथ्स इन इयर डिवाइड बाय डेटर्स टर्न ओवर रेशियो वॉट इज द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दिस रेशियो इट इंडिकेट्स क्रेडिट एंड कलेक्शन पॉलिसी एंड इट ऑल्सो इंडिकेट्स इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ कलेक्शन फ्रॉम डेटर्स सो दैट्स हाउ रेशियो आर कैलकुलेटेड दिस इज ऑल फॉर द टूटोरियल थैंक्स अलॉट गाइज फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियोज प्लीज शेयर दैम एंड डोंट फर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू अवर चैनल प्लीज